Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day. So it was a discussion that started over the weekend. Transport operators kept mounting pressure on government to increase transport fares or give them the go-ahead to increase transport fares by some 50%. Uh, we heard uh, from uh, the Titus Glover that uh, fares will be increased effective this Saturday by some 15%. And so we'll be speaking to the GPRTU shortly over the phone, but I've been joined via Skype uh, by the PRO for the Online Drivers Union Ghana, Wise Togbo Jejom, is a PRO for the Online Drivers Union. Good morning, Wise. Yes, good morning, my dear. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm sure you've heard the whole discussion about uh, increasing transport fares. How does this really play in what you do as an online transport operator? Well, thank you very much for this opportunity, my goodness, to all online drivers in. Uh, the National Union has taken a position about this particular matter. Uh, with respect to what the concerned drivers, when it comes to the conventional taxi and trotter people, uh, are doing, we applaud them. On our side of business, the okay. online driver do not have a say mm -hmm. into a fare that have supposed to be charged their ride. Right. Uh, okay. In our course of business, all the businesses or all the trips that we take in a day, mm -hmm. the fares are charged by the app operators. I mean, Uber, Boat, Yango, uh, Phoenix, and the rest of the local apps in town. So it simple means that we, the drivers who are on the road, do not charge a rider who we call a passenger how much that particular rider or passenger should pay for a mm -hmm. particular trip. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a say. So oh. this is a worrying issue criteria for us. If you say you don't have a say, how really do you mean? Prices of fuel have gone up. And so it is expected yeah. that you do some adjustments in your prices as well. Of course, that is the problem. Uh, several times the government has increased fuel according to world market prices. But we, our apps we work with, Uber, Boat, Yango, Phoenix and rest, do not increase the fare per trip. They are rather reducing it for the sake of competition. Because of the competition they have around them, when fuel mm -hmm. price increases, when taxi drivers are demanding for increase in price, when mm -hmm. we online drivers are also demanding for increase in fare, these app companies refuse to hear us. Mm -hmm. They have written several petitions to the Minister of Transport, Minister of Communication, a DVLA, to regulate these particular companies so that they will have reasonable amount of charges when it comes to per trip, mm. but have proof it up. Mm. That is the trouble we have. We are not mm. consulted how much money per trip this app is supposed to charge, mm. but rather we are faced and slapped with several promotions like discount. Mm. For example, you drive and get to a destination where you are supposed to take 11 cities, they tell you just take one city, the 10 cities will be paid to you later, and not the same day, but rather, in a week time, that is seven days. Simple mm. means that you, the driver, have to pre-finance all your activities, fuel mm. costs, and all other things mm -hmm. in your course of business in a day. Mm. This is the treatment the app companies are giving us. Why? Is and we are demanding mm -hmm. Go ahead. the fuel price. Mm. Hello, my dear. Why is go ahead? Yes. What we are saying is that the fuel price is always going high. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting these app companies to reasonably give us a fair increase in the price. Formerly, it was five cities. They rather mm -hmm. reduce it from five cities to four cities, mm -hmm. a short distance, which is very bad. Mm -hmm. In as much as we are fighting for a better trip, now a fair price has increased again. The government is increasing or the GPRT has demanded for increase mm -hmm. and 50% has been given. What about the we online drivers in Ghana? We those driving on Uber, mm -hmm. why are our fare not increased? Why are we not getting better fares for the ride? We drive about two, three, four, five, sometimes 10 minutes to go and pick somebody mm. from a location to another destination, mm. which is about two minutes. You go and get there, and it is sometimes one city, two cities. Mm. You wasted a lot of fuel to mm. drive about three minutes to go and pick somebody to a distance of about two minutes, which is charging you only one city or two cities. How do we survive? Let me give you a simple analysis. Assuming a driver makes thousand cities in this COVID-19 period, he's spending almost 250 Ghana cities as commission paid to Uber on 25%. The same driver is paying almost 350 Ghana cities cost on fuel to get that 1,000 Ghana cities a week. That driver is paying 400 Ghana cities to all the car owners he's working with, or the car owner he's working with. So almost the 1,000 cities the driver has made in that particular day is finished. So mm -hmm. the driver has to be compelled to work extra four to five hours 
to make something home. Mm. This is why you see most of the Uber drivers getting accident, dying on steering, losing their lives on accident every day. Why? Because the app owners are stressing us as slaves. Mm. This is a digital slavery, it's a digital robbery, and the governments must look into this. Mm. The reason is that, one, let me give you a scenario. If the why government is, is consistent with taking tax, mm. why with this, why is, I, I, will, I will come back to you and ask you uh, how it's been with your discussions uh, over this issue with government, okay? But let me speak to uh, the vice chairman of the GPRTU, Robert Sabah, who joins me via phone now. Good morning, sir. Morning to you and uh, all listeners. Okay, so 15%. Fair deal? Good morning. Good morning. Right, so I'm saying 15% increment in transport fares. Is it a fair deal? Oh, well, uh, we'll manage with the 15%. But actually, um, but, uh, vehicles that were taking or are taking uh, 34, 33 passengers, they are not taking 17. Passen okay. uh, vehicles that are taking 15 are not taking 8. 12 are taking six. So we went with an idea of getting 50%. Since we are losing 50% of, you know, of the fee that we are, we are taking, the fares that we are taking. So we went with 50%. But unfortunately, uh, we were not able to, to get the 50% uh, because uh, uh, we know out of the bargaining, we saw that the uh, uh, we should also be able to assist in a way. Mm. We cannot continue to demand our pound of flesh. Mm. Other than that, public opinion will seriously be against us. Yeah. You see, yes, because there, are, there have been certain uh, what interventions, like uh, you know, this uh, uh, free water, mm. uh, electricity, uh, and the rest that uh, we are also enjoying. Doctors have also risked their life and ensuring that this pandemic will be a thing of the past. So we also decided to, to, to assist in a way. Mm. That is why we accepted that. But there are some transport operators who are saying that we'll go ahead with some 30% because really we are losing out. Well, uh, uh, maybe they are speaking to their membership. Mm. We are speaking to the GPRTU and other transport organization, excluding those who said they will, they will continue with that, yes. Mm. But, uh, you know, when you live in a society, you must be regulated. You mm. cannot be a law unto yourselves. So we are speaking to our, our members, and that we know our members usually comply with our directives. Mm -hmm. So we are speaking to our, our members. If they have their own members, yes, they can go ahead and do what they are doing. But we are saying we've agreed on 15%. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you see, one misleading thing is that, that uh, uh, as if fuel had gone up. But, uh, you know, since September, when we had our increment, there has been decreases and increases in, in fuel prices. Mm. You add the two, then you subtract. So when the subtraction was made, we are rather in petrol, we are enjoying 8.37% uh, uh, to mm -hmm. our advantage. In terms of uh, diesel, we are enjoying 7.57% to our advantage. So that is the situation in the matter of the fuel. Yep. You see, normally when uh, it is reduced, we don't take that into consideration. Mm. But immediately, it is you know, increased. It, uh, then uh, we begin to complain. That is uh, how the whole thing is. But Mr. Saba, what do you say to uh, some of your members who are saying that we are not even making our daily sales because we are adhering to all the protocols, so we are not picking the numbers you're supposed to be picking, and so uh, the 15% the will not commensurate with price uh, increase in fuel prices, and so we are not making our daily sales. What would you say to them? I've explained to you that uh, you know we never took fuel into consideration it mm. was the social distancing that we are observing in our vehicles mm. that has brought up to this 15 percent yeah but it is those critical said, for your members those who said they will not comply 
I don't think they are members of the GPRC. I, I, I said to you that we have a responsibility to ensure that uh, the GPRTU members comply with the directives. Mm. But, but just before, just before I let you go, I'm saying again that. But there are some some of your members were saying that, uh, taking into consideration the price, the increase in price of fuel, it does not commensurate with the fifteen percent. Well, I don't know how they were able to calculate, but uh, we we have been to the negotiating table and uh, we've, we are now being convinced that the fuel is not part of you know the ten percent that we normally expect mm. that can give rise to an increment is now minus eight point three percent. Okay. That of this there is minus seven point. I have. A document is before me. Okay. Speak from we, are, we are getting a feedback from your phone. So I think you're, you're pressing something on your phone that, that is giving us a feedback. But you're saying that you had a, a document in front of you. What does the document I, say? Briefly I, before I we let I, you go. I, I, there is no radio at all. I don't know where the feedback is coming from. I'm also okay. hearing it. Yes. Uh, okay. I'm saying you, you're asking of the phone. Yes. You said you had a, a document in front of you. I just yes. want you to, yeah, okay, so briefly, so that we, we, we go. Yeah, I'm saying since September that we increased, mm -hmm. there has been a lot of fares. There has been a series of decreases and increases in transport fares. Mm. What we do is to add the increases mm -hmm. and the decreases. Okay. Then you, you, you subtract you the You do difference. the math. Mm. Yes. So I'm saying when that was done, you know, there was no increment in fuel. Mm. That is why that has not been taken into okay. consideration. Okay. Okay. Uh, Robert Saba, we are grateful that you made time to speak with us this morning. Ro Robert Saba is the vice chairman of the GPRT, and he says they are comfortable with the 15% proposed uh, in, in transport fares uh, proposed by government. Let me wrap up with Wise Jejom Togbo, who is the PRO for the Online Drivers Union Ghana. How far would discussions uh, with government over... Uh, your concerns that your uh, your transport operations is not regulated. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity once again. Uh, the fact is that this is not the first time, or the second time, or the third time we have petitioned the DVLA, as I told you earlier on. You see, this matter of the government not regulating these app companies is a blow to us. We are rather soft. So, if the government refuses to regulate this company, we have to sue the government. Because a company cannot be operating in a vacuum. It must be under some institution mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. So we are promising the government, especially the DVA, that if they don't, or the Ministry of Transport, they don't regulate these people, for us to also have equal fares, equal mm -hmm. charges in our business, then we have no choice to steal them. There are other groups that are, do not fall under the National Union. They may want to go on demonstration, but we are advising now our members not to go do so because we are having other means to solve this problem. Okay. We have tried and we have to try. But why is, I mean, I'm just wrapping up with you. Let me just play the devil's advocate. Someone would say that you have the option to opt out, to say that you no don't want to work, should. you don't want to work with this uh, online driver union uh, anymore. I'm just playing the devil's advocate. You have the option. What would you say to that? Okay. Okay, I think we're getting... Uh, of okay. course, the other matter is that, okay. that we have a choice completely because okay. these people have taken over mm -hmm. the business. Mm -hmm. And so even the involvement of local apps to penetrate to the market becoming very difficult. Okay. So please, it is not that we have a choice easily like that. We have tried promoting local apps, but they are trying very difficult with this, their marketing strategies and promotion mm -hmm. particulars mm -hmm. for riders of free charges. This makes it difficult for others to operate. But if the government should have regulated this industry, then there would have been a fair competition, including the fair charges and including the fair regulation with drivers also, so that we all play and have mutual benefit in this business. But mm -hmm. like we, the drivers in Ghana, are becoming slaves okay. in this business. That is the biggest problem we have now. And Wise. so mm -hmm. this is our you're, you're my clear. Year. Wise. I, I really wish you all the best, okay? I wish you all the best with your deliberations with not only Thank your you operators, much. but also with government. Wise, JJ Togbo is the PRO for the Online Drivers Union Ghana. And we have been discussing the proposed 15% increment in transport fares. What are your thoughts? Send them to us on TV3 Ghana. We'll read and share them.
with the rest of the world.